Hello everyone, and welcome to this Losers Bracket Round 3 match of Blitzbit 3. Let's get some skills on. So we've got Colian's Vampires versus Diomed's Necro. The Vampires have a 4 Vampire Bull, they've got 14 men, 3 claws on the bench and an Apo. So some decent depth, which you'd expect they need, being Vampires. And it looks like um, they are receiving the ball. They will attack first. It's probably going to be uh, Diomed's choice, I think. Well, we can't tell for sure. So the Vamps have a Dirty Player, uh, a Rackle Thrall, a Block Thrall, Blodge Tackle Vampire, Blodge Mighty Blow Vampire, Blodge Frenzy Vampire, interesting, and uh, Dodge Shorehands Pass Vampire, also quite interesting. Don't often see the pass. The Neko have got a Claw Mighty Blow Wolf, well, a Block Mighty Blow Wolf, of course, they already have Claw. Uh, another block wolf, a wrestle ghoul, uh, a nice blodge leader, leader ghoul to give them three rerolls in total. It is quite hard to fit everything you want on an echo team, so a little bit of uh, TV management there. Um, and then a couple more guard, one on a white and one on a golem. Hello, Grainic, how are you doing? Alright, somewhat of a non event for the kickoff, that's always what you want to see as the uh, attacking team and the vampires get straight and we've hunted some zombies and just hunting a zombie straight away of course the boy for Colian for all vampire players as he uh, as he starts activating his vampires is uh, will I end up removing more of my own players than the opponent's players And he takes a couple of blocks with thralls. And with a double skulls quite early on. Down to two wheels. The, uh, the setup from, from DM is quite wide. It exposes some okay players, although not too valuable. And as Necro, it's hard to set up in such a way as that you can't expose any players. And what it does is leaving the flesh column on the wings. So that it makes it tricky for Colian to try a fast score. We have to rely on three plus hit no gaze or trying to knock down the stand firm player. And Colian goes to the wolf with a mighty blow. Pretty sensible choice. Imagine we'll see this mighty blow player blitzing more often than not. Yeah, well, it's good. Yeah, should be pretty exciting. It's a pity I can't um, stay around for the uh, for the session three. Got to be some interesting matches there. All right, the one by picks up the ball. So nothing, uh, nothing spectacular turn one, but um, nothing. Too terrible. Colian will probably be a bit sad about losing his reroll. Losing one of his rerolls. So how how aggro does Diomed get on defense? The vampires do have a strength advantage. Which it's uh, sometimes easy to forget. The strength a little bit unreliable. But it's it's still there. Four strength four pieces. Although Diomed does have two guard to the vampire's none. Looks like this is going to be the blitz, I think, with the werewolf on the, the thrall, probably the most valuable thrall of the lot. Targeting the Thralls is, is always quite nice when you're playing against vampires. Uh, if, you, uh, if you start to take the Thralls out, then the vampires might just uh, leave by themselves. And it cuts down on the uh, uh, the plays you can make with vampires without any Thralls around to bite them. Killing does end up standing on the uh, the vampire, and he does in fact make the dodge out. Name a more iconic duo. Werewolves and Dodgers. Fun. And plays that you've frenzied onto. 
So, Frenzy can be pretty nice, skill, but it does have its drawbacks. But he makes the dodge, the wolf is safe, and he's up for And now we get the first Bloodlust. Interesting that Colian blitzes with the, the tackle. I guess he wants to go after the, the ghoul target. That regen, if the ghoul gets cast, doesn't come back. And they're pretty handy players, so I'm trying to get rid of it. It's not a bad idea. And the vampire bites as well, but it's fine. We may not see these uh, vampires being activated up front. This vampire is activated and does bloodlust the second of the turn. This can't be a reroll this early on. He's going after Bite of all. Maybe the dirty player, or maybe this one at the back. He probably doesn't want the ball to be too far away since vampires are a little bit slow. And uh, if he needs to move around, maybe move up the pitch. He want to be the ball to be far away. Oh, of course, he can, he can bite the stunned vampire. He can screen off fine with the thralls, make sure there's no chance for Dmod getting around the corner and attacking the ball. Which it would be hard to do anyway. Oh, this time the thrall does get cast and that does leave a little bit of a hole. So we'll probably see some uh, some movement from the thralls to try and uh, protect the ball carry. Although these two vampires are a bit exposed. Given that they're uh, slightly protecting one another and that they're strength 4, it's kind of hard to get a hit in for Diomed. So Colgan's uh, not going to move those. So there's a space. Diomed could go for one dice with a flesh golem, but it's probably not worth looking for a. For a 5 plus or a 6 plus, depending on your perspective. Instead, they'll probably just go for the mighty blow wolf. Although, um, there aren't any um, completely obvious targets. I guess it could be uh, could be this one. Or maybe this vampire. Although well, it's difficult to get the assist in. Or maybe this one. Since he's, he's gone in on uh, the other players, can get one more assist in. In fact, he's, uh, he's going in all over. He's decided it's time. He is two men up. And uh, although the vampires do have the strength, it can be difficult for them to apply it, given uh, the bloodlust. So he's basing up as many of Colian's players as he can, to put them as much pressure as he can. Try and force a mistake out of him. Try and force a, some, some failed dodge. Or one dice or something like that. So he does go for the defense as well, gives him the best possible chance of uh, of knocking him down. And therefore the best chance of removing him. Now almost every player on Colian team is based up with the Ash 4 vampires, he can move around a bit. And with a strength for vampires, he can uh, he can punch things. But with so many players tied up, including the shitty thralls, he could be in a little bit of trouble when he comes to making the ball safe. I mean, this turn it would be fairly straightforward if he wanted. He could just dodge the ball out and screen off. But then, perhaps next turn he ends up in even more trouble. It's not a great start for the vampires so far. screen off it looks like he's trying to get forwards perhaps uh, I'm not sure who he was trying to hypnogaze this zombie 
The vampire is kind of looking at an empty square, so I can't really tell. I guess that's where he, uh, the direction he just last moved. So where was the hypno gaze? So I thought it. I thought he maybe was trying to uh, hypno gaze one of these, punch the other one, and then hand off this vampire and, and sort of get away. If not, I'm not sure why you'd bring him in. A little bit of time pressure starting to show. Clock running down. So with the hypno gaze failed, whatever he was trying, it looks like he's he's changed the plan. Dodged the vampires out and the ball's fairly safe. So Demon can clear some um, some of these players. And the movement six whites could possibly get in as assists on the ball carrier. And then movement eight wolf could of course get round, hit it. But he does block the ball of the white, so he's probably not going for the ball here. Although the ghoul could also uh, have a go at it. And it's another Kaz for the necro. So as a vampire, you're probably going to expect that you're going to take some damage. Your thrall has been mostly defenseless armor seven and not only is the enemy going after them, but so are your own vampires. But this is still uh, probably pretty disappointing from Conan's perspective. It's turn three. Now he's already down three players, including two cars. So it looks like uh, Diomed is just going for, uh, for even more pressure this turn. I think it's probably the way to go. If you go for the hit and you fail it, then you could leave um, something on. You could leave uh, an escape route for the vampires. Instead, he's just turning the screw, keeping the vampires pending, cutting down their options. So once again the vampires are in a very tough place. This time we've got even more falls lying on the ground. Again the vampires are fairly free. There's not a whole lot that Colin can do to uh, to stop them from, uh, from being free. Ooh. Jayfire with a wolf. Gets it on the reroll. So, it would be interesting to see if he'd uh, if he'd not used the reroll, <laughs> would he have tried to surf the wolf? The, uh, sorry, the, the thrall? I suspect probably not, but you never know. 2 plus not to fail the block. So, um, maybe it wouldn't have been the worst thing in the world if he stored the reroll. Now, it seems like Conan's possibly seen. Uh, a potential path through the middle. You can blitz the ghoul, get the vampires through, and maybe uh, set up some kind of screen and put the ball beyond it. it looks like that's what he's going for. Now, the uh, problem is that it's all well getting the vampires through, but it's barely enough to make a screen, and uh, getting the thrall through is a lot harder. It is only uh, a 3 plus dodge to get this thrall through. So, not impossible. And uh, potentially two vampires will be able to make a, a just about sufficient screen. Although, uh, with the ghoul, the wolf, the whites in position, Colin could potentially even chain white forwards. I mean, uh, Diomed could potentially even chain white forwards. It seems like this is a, a uh, somewhat unprotected potato. It does get the um, the thrall out though, that helps. Will he re-roll? This is... Well, it's not his last re-roll, it's the last, it's the last one after afterwards. Okay, and then the uh, the sort of the pseudo eye cage is nice. Makes it difficult for uh, for Colian to get dice on the ball if he can get round. 
Now he'd have to get the guard into play. And he looks like he is looking for the chain push. Clears the uh, thrall with the zombie, which I like. A slightly riskier block. The zombie doesn't have block. Both of these uh, players do. But the zombie is a completely useless player uh, in terms of attacking the ball. So having the having the thrall stuck on the zombie, taking out the thrall with the zombie, leaves both the werewolf and the ghoul to attack the ball. And to, to get back in case of... Uh, in case he doesn't get the ball this turn and, uh, and the vampire escapes. So he chained the wolf forwards. He could chain the um, the white forwards as well. And get the white in as a guard. Then he's got a 1D on the ball. Can he make it any better? If he uphills the uh, the vampire he could. He could get the white in here, the guard white in here, then 1D the vampire. Um, but then he can do the guard anyway, so that wouldn't make much sense. So it's it's looking like it's going to be tricky for him to get 2D. Especially with these pushers. And even more pushers. So he can still free up both of these players. He can block for the, for the zombie, which he does. But hard to make it 2D. So it'll be interesting to see if he goes for the 1D or not. The vampire is in range. And being a, an edge 4, strength 4 dodge player with with uh, with a couple of others around with hypno gaze you'd uh, you probably back the vampire to score if if he doesn't go down Colin might look for a 1d um, happy to take the push because a push at least takes him out of range what he does get is a 1d into a 2d which is pretty nice frenzy proving very valuable there but yeah again he gets pushes to he reroll it he's out of range so there's not particularly any, you know, um, rush to reroll it, but he does do the reroll and gets the power. And he gets the KO. Colin does have an Apo, and he does use the Apo. He goes all in on the drive. He probably recognises that if the Necro score, then he will be in a very, very difficult situation. Ghoul does make the pick up and gets away. So, uh, despite a lot of pushes that turn, Demet finally gets the POW just about in time and uh, and makes the pick up. So now, now the uh, now the vampire is in a lot. Colian fails the three plus dodge to get to the ball. The Necro will score this off, barring uh, some extreme uh, shenanigans. And the vampires they are in a lot of trouble. Vampires <coughs> are generally considered to be stronger on defense than offense. It is notoriously hard to keep the ball safe from vampires. So we'll see how Diomed approaches the second half. We'll, we'll see how um, how much of a, of a, of a go Colian can get at turning over and scoring. Yes, they are going to need. They are really going to need a great second half. But they do have the potential with the with the strength and the agility and the hypno gaze. They have the potential to cause some problems. So the game's not over yet. But the Necro are in the driving seat, and it looks like Diomed is going for foul on this vampire. The Apo is now gone, of course. Diomed has a bench of two. He's not lost to a player yet. So this is a pretty good foul to make. And he may indeed continue fouling. There's still quite a lot of half left. We may see another couple of fouls. Depending on how these go. So he gets the KO. Does get the zombie sent off. He's got the deep bench. So he's probably not too concerned about that. It's a pretty decent trade. 
with the with the vamps being turned over and Diamed presumably going to score on the last turn of his drive, then it means there's only one KO roll for the uh, for the vampires before next half. So that's a 50% chance of the uh, the vampire not coming back. And there are some more vampires on the floor for potential more fouls next turn. So Colin's probably fine going down to 11 players because he'll feel like he should be winning the game next drive. He'll feel like next drive should be the last meaningful drive of the game. So he probably won't. Uh, I might even go for another foul. So Colin does try and put a bit of pressure on. Try and uh, try and force this score in before turn eight. Give himself a chance of scoring back. And also more care rolls. But with the stun, there's only one vampire vaguely threatening. I'd imagine that DMA will be able to stall out. Wonder if he'll greed the mighty blow hit. He does. It's a GFI on the second hit, but he makes the first hit. And the vampire's fine. So I expect this vampire will be getting a foul. Not only is it the most valuable vampire. Uh, well, no, it's not really true, is it? Certainly the most dangerous vampire to, uh, to DMS players. But it's also the one closest to the, the ball, apart from the stun one. So it makes sense from, from the perspective of trying to stall out. <coughs> to foul this vampire. Just a stun this time, no send off. So we'll probably see uh, one last foul coming next turn. It's uh, very difficult for uh, Colin to uh, attack the ball, to, uh, to put any pressure on the ball with the two vampire stuns. He does go for Blitz. Um, he rolled a Bloodlust. I would have been tempted just to lay the vampire down, not risk the Bloodlust, not risk losing any more players than is absolutely necessary. Colian doesn't use the reroll. Not completely sure why. It obviously doesn't matter that the vampires have the pitch, but uh, the vampire could have died on the block and Colian's not going to have an opportunity to go after the ball or anything like that in his last turn. So there's nothing. I think there's nothing particularly good there. Use the reload for, for, apart from potentially another you know, 1D or something like that. d Red gets another hit in. And now the uh, the moves will start to drive a bit. He, uh, he got quite a lot at the start, and that's kind of the way you want it really. After uh, <clears throat> after an entire half, you wouldn't be uh, really surprised to see this uh, this from the, uh, the vampires' um, cars and KO boxes. There goes another KO. The foul works this time; doesn't get sent off. Um, but the fact that it was front loaded towards the beginning of the half really put Colin in a lot of trouble early on. So if you're gonna if you're gonna make your rules, you want them at the start of the game rather than the end. And Colin goes for the uh, for the wolf and could have used the all there, I guess. If he'd, uh, if he'd not got a power. And uh, he, uh, he makes some GFIs towards the ball. Not really sure why. 
Maybe you just try to escape from the... Uh, well, you can't escape from the Mighty Blood Wolf. So I guess we'll see a 3D from Colian now. Six assists needed. Um, can you make a 3D in another 3D? Not sure. Might not have the movement. Yeah, I don't think he does. He could have blitzed down. No, oh, he doesn't even make the first block 3D. He, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. He had, he had 8 strength, so I only did one more assist. I feel like it was probably a way to make that 3D. And he doesn't get the power. Just takes the score. The next will go 1 0 up. And the vampires have it all to do. They do get both of the KO'd vampires back, which is really nice. <coughs> With the deep bench, they're not down any players. They're missing the Rackle Thrall, which could be useful on defense. He could have been uh, the guy to go in and sack the ball after some uh, gazers from the vampires. And this is a block Thrall, which I mean, is better than uh, a non block Thrall, but it's not the, not the, not exactly the best player in football. So, uh, Kalyan will be pretty um, pretty happy with the state of his team at the moment. Um, and I guess he'll, uh, he'll fancy his chances of at least causing uh, Diomed some trouble. Diomed's big advantage is that he doesn't have to get rowdy with the ball in the slightest. He doesn't need to score. And the vampires are slow. So, if Diomed sits back and makes the vampires come for him, which they'll have to do. Then he can exploit their low movement. So I think Diomed gets that through goal. Could be handy. He does have double frame. And Wolf gets straight in. The ball's quite far back, not under any uh, not under any threat whatsoever. Against the slow vampires. KO'd Thrall on the LOS. If we see some uh, more removals early on, then uh, that could really spell trouble for the vampires. And uh, like Colin before him, Diomed rolls a double skull on the LOS. He has got an extra block this time, so not quite as damaging to him. Does mean that without show hands, um, there's a straight three plus to pick up the ball. Although, with it being so deep, Dmed probably wouldn't have rolled it anyway. Interesting that he goes for the zombie hit instead of making a 40 with the fleshy. I guess that means he wants the fleshy to do something. And he does get forward with the fleshy. Face up some of the thralls. Cut down his DMED's options about um, where he goes with his team. And fires an assist for the line. Didn't realise he hadn't blitzed yet. That's another KO, so two men up. Now there are only five thralls left for the four vampires. So if they get hungry, things could go south. And the pickup fails, but DMED probably won't be uh, too worried about that. It's so far back that even if he fails next turn, it's it's unlikely that Colian's going to uh, be able to put in a lot of pressure. So he, he can get around this side. 
put this decent target in the ghoul and um, put a little bit of pressure on. Maybe get in range of the ball. But then Demon's got enough players that he can he can uh, he can blitz and screen off next turn if that happens. So here comes the mighty blow hit. No power. An early bloodlust from the vampires. This is the the dilemma they face. They have to get Rowdy to uh, to turn the ball over. But the Rowdy they get, the more bloodlust they have, the the less players they have, the less chance they have of turning the ball over. They can't sit back and wait because they'll just lose. But if they attack, they'll destroy themselves. Was that, a, was that a gaze on the wolf or the flesh eater through the, the throne? Oh. Not entirely sure. So the gaze has not worked out well so far. Um, but then most of them have been 4 pluses or, or worse. That was a 5 plus. So what is quite nice is that Colin has, has vampires on both sides of the pitch. So now uh, it's not so straightforward for DMA to, to just screen off one side. Attacking down both sides means that you know, he has to be a little bit careful here. Maybe he ends up with the ball in the cage. Or maybe he knocks down one vampire and then screens off the other one. Like he is going for the blitz, maybe with the wolf. If he does knock down this vampire, then he can he can just move the ball out of range of the one over on this side of the pitch. Although obviously he's got to pick it up to do that. It's never a straightforward task in Blood Bowl. Oh, and he gets the he gets the both down. I thought the vampire would survive. I thought that could be trouble for Demon, but that that was the the non-block vampire, the only non-block vampire on Conan's team. And it's a cast, so great target selection from Diomed. He could have gone for the mighty blow vampire, although perhaps it would have been harder to get assists in. Uh, but he did end up going for the the most defenseless vampire and gets rewarded. And he gets the pickup, so the ball is completely safe this turn. He can move it out of range with the vampire. And with a vampire down, Cohen is really going to struggle to apply more pressure. Another bloodlust which gets re rolled. And that's a blitz on the wolf. So getting the vampire in the middle of the pitch means it's difficult for the uh, Colian to get away from it. Even though the ghoul's faster, you know, the vampire can respond now to wherever it goes. But the fact that there's only one vampire means that it should be fairly straightforward for Demon to deal with it. Getting the wolf stunned is, is pretty nice. There are a lot of uh, Demet's players based up. 
He has just about enough to make a blitz on this vampire if he wants. Although not anymore. If he dodge away by the thrall. So Colian could have taken the 2D on the th on the zombie there, but why would you take the, the 2D hit on this you know fairly useless player at this point when you need to get Rowley to win the game? So I think that was a good dodge. I think a lot of people might have just, just taken a 2D on the zombie. I think I might have just taken a 2D on the zombie. Well, that just doesn't get you anything, does it? And now Dima does have to think about this turn. Yeah, that might have been enough for saying the vampire should have had block. Um, pass. Slightly controversial to call, I guess, in this situation. So it looks like uh, Dima just getting the ball for Should be able to cage up. So that's uh, quite a nice move by him. Another, another Kaz on a Thrall. Um, maybe, uh, maybe he can't cage up. Has he blitzed yet? He's not, has he? So he should be able to cage up. He can get this zombie out. Although maybe he needs a GFI. Maybe he needs a GFI the zombie. Of course he could dodge the ghoul. But the, uh, the, the hit possible GFI with the zombie, I think it's better. So he, uh, he, he hedges his bets. Oh yeah. That was even better, wasn't it? Of course. Interesting that he uh, that he put the zombie in here. So now he, he's going to be one player short of making the cage still. So he hedged his bets a bit, but then if that block had failed, then there was still an easy 2D on the ball. That zombie didn't stop it. So, kind of strange. Maybe a slight misposition from uh, Diomed. Yeah, well, that zombie probably should have been forming one corner of the cage. And now there's a hole. Maybe the white dodges? But if the white dodges, it's even worse. I mean, if he fails to dodge, it's even worse. But then, I think it's too important not to. Yeah. So, the white gets in. There's a guard on the ball. But, and this is what Colin's been waiting for. He's got the tackle guy. This is, you know, it's the best chance. It's the only chance he has had so far. It's a chance that I don't think uh, needed to be left on. I mean, I thought Diamond did well to, to see that he could form the cage and to form the cage as well as he did, but missing that zombie on the corner and, uh, and having this um, oddly shaped uh, cage. Oh, he could even hypno gaze the. Uh, of course, he can hypno gaze the guard. So if he. Oh, he doesn't make the four plus. He has been going after the four pluses, but he's not got any of them so far. So hypno gaze there gives him 2D with the vampire. He does go for the 1D, but at this stage you have to take a chance like this. And he gets the pow. He has a third vampire to retrieve the ball. Of course, it's going to be difficult to 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 withstand whatever the necro throw him next turn. But he's a strengthful bludger. There's a chance he holds onto the ball. And he and he and he does in fact make the five plus pick up, so things just got a little bit interesting. Does he only think? No, he can't make the GFI. Is getting me. The thing is, if he does, if he makes dual GFI, he's getting range for the score next turn. Then he can still get friendly back two square, two squares. So looks like he's just going to. Uh, no, no, he does go for one GFI, and the other one. So he's in range, um, and I guess it's not. Completely trivial. With the strengthful vampires getting in, it's hard to clear them. But I think he can clear them. One, two, three. Mm. Thinking about assists. Yeah, he can. He can. I think he can clear two players, right? Uh, although for me, one of them would have been that zombie. This zombie's clear, but can't be in range, so... I guess he can feel this white, um, the school. It looks like he is doing. But the vampire being strength 4, he really needs the 2 assists. Could it be a blodger as well? Now, if he goes in with the 1Ds, then, uh, then Conan has a good chance of, of scoring, and he's not frenzying him. 
unless he's coming with this wolf. Maybe he's going to make the dodge. He, he does. It looks like he's going for the double dodge, the white dodge into a, the second assist, and then the, uh, the, then the wolf dodge into the hit. But he fails the the white dodge. He one in nines the white dodge, and now Colian is is almost free to score. Of course, being a vampire, he, he does need a GFI, and he also needs uh, not to fail this blood loss. Vampire bullshit, indeed. So the game the game does turn a little bit. Now, and Colian, Colian gets his first removal of the match, um, accepting the, the foul send-off. Um, now, of course, it's going to be tricky for Colian to um, to stall if he wants to do that. Maybe, uh, maybe not. Well, oh no, oh, disaster strikes. He does make the bloodlust. So, um, this could be a an important armor break. He doesn't get an armor break. Does he go for the GFI? No, he doesn't. So he's happy. It looks like he's happy to uh, to try and stall. Uh, and he does get the vampire out. So the dwarf is the danger man, right? He can get up for an assist, but now it's more difficult. He's dodging. In fact, he gets the 2D. So some great, great play from Cole in there, I think. He, he finally gets the four plus hypno gaze, and it and it gives him the stall. Pretty much gives him the stall. I mean, ultimately, I, mean, I think this all stemmed from the, the slight misdition from the zombie. Right, he could have had a cage that turned to red. Um, he put one player, one square out of position. And the entire game has turned on it. Blood Bowl can be absolutely savage. Blood Bowl can be absolutely brutal. So it's interesting to see if Woolly tried some rowdy hit on the ball. He could, of course, go for the uh, the push into the end zone to force the early score. Or Woolly just try to get players up to pressure and to force the score next turn. I suspect the latter will be what we'll see. He can, he can get the white fours, the wolf fours. It's a, a bit difficult for Colian to uh, to bring any other players up. And uh, he, do, he won't really want to leave on the, the 1D in the following turn. This ghoul could uh, potentially get through, although he's on tackle, so uh, no inbuilt reroll. He made thinking hard about this one, running out of time a little bit. Um, a pow there would have mean he didn't need to make the dodge, but he does. He does get the dodge anyway after the boat down, and the ghoul does get out. So he gets in range of, of whatever happens with the ball next turn. Cody didn't get a, the vampire to fall out. He could, he could make some kind of sideline cage if he wanted to. The bloodlust puts paid to that. So this looks like Cody is scoring. I don't think he has any other choice. So the necro will have three turns to score. And now, unlike this current drive. Which the Necro started. And Cody goes for the cheeky mighty blow here. Fair enough. Fair play. Uh, before he scores. And unlike this current drive. Now the Necro do need to get forward. And they need to get forward fairly quickly. Which plays into the Vampire's hands. The Vampire's a, can, can sit back. And set up. For the Necro attacking them. And then going on the ball. So... Absolutely all to play for. This should be a very interesting drive. Demon does get his blue back, which will help. Having another strength, uh, another add three movement seven guy with dodge. He's uh, much better than uh, a shitty zombie. So you're trying to score a, a, a two or three turns touchdown.
the vampires um, are down one man. Yeah, that's kind of unfortunate. Just the one man uh, does compromise their defence a little bit. If they had an extra man, the uh, the defence, the, the chevrons, would be one square wider. So, I think Diomed is still favourite. But, we saw that maybe the uh, the pressure of the one minute turns can elicit some mistakes. And, Kolyan has definitely got what it takes, and the Vampires have definitely got what it takes to turn Diomed over. Perfect defense helps. Perfect defense helps. Although, maybe not massively. So, so Colleen probably won't be going all in on the LOS. It's kind of hard to uh, to lock uh, Demon's team down. He's got the strength and the guard. And Colleen will be worried about um, committing too hard and uh, you know, leaving a lot of space behind and, and leaving a hole. Potentially for Dima to get through. But he is tagging up the Ash Three pieces um, on the on the wings, it seems like. The ghouls and the whites that will support the uh, the touchdown attempt. The kick is okay. The ghoul definitely has enough movement to pick the ball up and run it directly in in three turns. There's a decent scatter for the uh, for the Necro. So a bit of a screen in the middle against the wolves. The uh, the ad three players tagged up on both sides. So Diomed's setup I think was quite nice in that the the offence was quite broad. There were a lot of players uh, along the uh, along the LOS. There were actually players on both sides. The wolves themselves were in the middle. Obviously, they're big scoring threats. So, um, so it was a little bit difficult for Diomed to do anything with the perfect defence. If, uh, as you sometimes see, uh, Diomed had stacked one side of the pitch with with his players. Then it would have been very easy for the Colian to um, to screen off, to make a strong screen on that side of the pitch, and then just leave some some players uh, around the middle to uh, to try and prevent the switch the plate. So uh, he might do go just go for the, the surf on the uh, the thrall, obviously. Killian probably knew he was leaving that on, but just uh, wasn't wasn't too bothered. He probably felt like the uh, attempting to stop the score was worth the life of that thrall. That is the job of the thralls, after all. Fatin could have served a vamp uh, here. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, but it would have been a bit more of a commitment, like, which maybe he doesn't want to make at this point. Probably, yeah, yeah, exactly. Probably not got the time to mess about, like you say, exactly. I guess the throw was pretty easy though, being strength three. And so the ball goes back, which is uh, which is fair enough. It's uh, pretty, pretty defensive from um, from Diamond. It's an interesting one. This is a really interesting one, right? Because the ball goes back, the vampires can't touch it. If the ball comes forwards, then the vampires can touch it. But then, but then the vampires, you know, are left with the choice to make. So, to, so Diamond makes a choice. I I don't want to leave any hit on the ball. So uh, I know more or less exactly what the state of things will be next turn. I'll have the ball in the back and there'll be some players downfield. If he'd come forward with the ball, then uh, he doesn't know exactly what's going to happen. The, the vampires have a choice to make. Do they go for the potentially slightly rowdy attack on the ball, which may leave them exposed, which may leave a path for the uh, for Demer to come through if they don't get the ball? 
uh, or, or do they continue just to screen off like like this like they're going to have to do now with, with you know no no choice so uh you definitely go for the uh, the low variance play there um, and he is one one and he's playing against vampires so maybe he's thinking if it does go to overtime then um, if he's on offense then he gets a better chance than this to score and if he's on defense well the vampires aren't that great on offense themselves and he can try and shut that down as he did in the first half if you're defending in these situations you often try and be aggressive and go for the ball yeah and I guess as vampires that would probably be his go to play especially the dodge out with a throw. That's pretty important. It means he can uh, make this uh, screen quite nice. I guess the, the vampire could stay there. Um, which he does. I would have liked it to be a square over, but if he'd fill the blood dust, that would have been pretty terrible. So I guess it's better that the vampire is here and the thrall is here, than the vampire is you know, here or something uh, and the thrall is lying dead on the floor or in the gas box. Where it's doing no good at all. And so the uh, one wolf, one ghoul, one white around here. Completely screened off. These can't get in range. Unless, uh, unless they, they manage to probably make some dodges. If he blitz this thrall, maybe the... Well, no, no, no chance, right? No chance. Unless he made some, some fairly crazy dodges. Which he could make at the end of the game. 5 plus 3 plus, the first one gets the dodge. You know, not, not impossible. The white could come through as a... As, a, as another scoring threat, because it looked like he might struggle. He does go for the for the throttle hit. He doesn't get it. Gets another hit with the zombie. But that's another player who's not going with the pitch. So the only realistic scoring threat at the moment, the white is in range. The white is in range. That helps. But other than that, the only one is the werewolf. He he is going for the handoff now. I guess Colin is very unlikely to score. The only vampire that sort of this vampire is in range. No, he's not. Yes, he is. He's just in range. And then this vampire is... Uh, okay, and this vampire. Fine, so all the vampires are in range. But it would still be pretty difficult for Colin to score this turn. To, to, to sack the ball and score. Although, not if he'd uh, fail the handoff. Change the fleshy forwards. Uh, so he did decide to go for the handoff this turn. Get the ball in range. He could have, again, sat back a little bit with the ball. But he wants to get in range this turn. The wolf is in range, doesn't need any GFIs. Um, and interesting decision there. Colin takes them both down. Uh, because having having the vampire lying on the floor is just you know so much more important than the life of his zombie bite. Not only does he get the chance of removal, or what the chance of stun, but um, it also means that you know. It, it plays against the, the vampire's weakest point, its movement. The vampire is strong and agile and fairly slow, so it's hard to get him round to make the hit on the ball. But not impossible. What does what does Colin do here? Will he try and hypno gaze this guy? He could he could go for the three plus two plus and then some GFIs two three four five six one GFI and then three plus dodge into sack. The problem is that you know if he comes on this way the the, the guard he, he can't make the one D bite. He's got to he's got to go for the two D. Yeah, if he gets the cross then the wolf's still in range. He does he does hit against the fleshy. That's a nice move with that vampire. Allowing this vampire at the 2 plus out. So he could do 2 plus 2 plus no no GFIs. Hypno gauge this, uh, this white. So despite the fact that some of the vampires were, you might think, slightly out of position in this screen over here. What it does is it allows him to make a chain of hypno gazers to free up the vampires further along, closer to the ball. This vampire frees up this vampire. This vampire frees up this vampire. Or at least removes the guard. You know, to allow the hit. So he's, he's going for the 3 plus dodge, right? He, he has failed bloodlust, but that's okay because he can go back to his white. But no, so he does come around this way. Fails the GFI. 
fails the second. No, no, for the first. Oh, he didn't want to tier five. Oh, that's tragic. That was a really nice move, wasn't it? I mean, there were a lot of dies involved for sure, but I mean, there always are going to be good vampires. No. Looks like that is about it. So the Necro make the 2 1 score. Yeah, a decent opponent who always gives themselves a reasonable dice to score. The advantage is is very much with the uh, with the offensive team, I guess, in the, in situations like that. The question is, I guess, do you think that maybe if you if you held off for this turn, maybe you could get a better a better attempt in next turn? Uh, but for the vampires, um, it's not looking good. Despite a spirited fight back, they're now two one down and relying on a um, a kick event to help them. They don't have the requisite eleven players to perform um, a one turn touchdown, even if Diomed allowed them the chance to do so. And with the fleshies, he's, he's not going to do. Um, and the and the slightly wide setup. So. Could a quick snap do it? Probably. Um, I imagine a quick snap could probably do it. How many has he got? 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, I think a quick snap could do it. Uh, and obviously a riot is what he's looking for. In fact, he's not playing for the quick snap at all, which is fair enough. Especially, especially in one minute turns, trying to perform movements and quick snap touchdown in uh, one turn. Um, when when two of the players have sand for anyway, seems like hell. Well, this kind of he's always like he's left a hole there to, to push someone into. Um, so he doesn't get the riot or the quick snap. Um, he does in fact get a um, Kaz. Vampire, I think. Uh, not that the, not that the, the cas really matters at this stage of the game. The kicker event simply means it's game over. Congratulations to Diomed. Uh, he goes through to the next round. Uh, um, and commiserations to Colian. It was really nice to see uh, an interesting team like Vampires. That was a pretty, a pretty good game. Uh, the comeback in the, the, the attempted comeback in the second half was pretty exciting. And yeah, now we now we move on to the next round.